Hi, I'm Nazmul Hassan. This is going to be a video tutorial on designing a Viva Dentina in CST. A lot of people requested me to make a video on Viva Dentina design in CST, but unfortunately, time is a big issue for me because of project deadlines to meet, which are real time government funded projects. So, finding free time to make a comprehensive video like this is a big matter to me. So actually, uh, making such kind of videos kills my precious time. So if you are benefited from watching this, don't forget to like it and let me know about it. These are the two sides of Vivaldi and it is fed by a micro strip to slot transition. And this is the dimensional layout of Vivaldi. The table contains the parameters and their value, which we are going to use in CST for design process. For those who don't know how to use parameters and create three dimensional geometries in CST, please watch my other CST tutorials from the beginning. Radiation curve of our Vivaldi antenna is an exponential function like this one. If we have a two-dimensional x-ray plane, any curve like this can be algebraically written with this equation. S is basically the distance between the origin and the y-intercept. From the antenna engineer's point of view, S is equal to the half of the slot width of Vivaldi. And if you don't understand it now, just keep watching, you will know after a while what S is. Now, this equation can be transformed into parametric equations in three dimensions with this set of three equations where u, v, w are the three axes. The shape of the curve is maintained although the coordinate system is changed. Okay, so now let's go to CST environment to transform these equations into a real antenna. So, as I pointed out earlier, that this is the only video that will reveal the detailed design process from the very scratch. The other videos available online, they just presented a nearly completed structure and they just simulated it and presented the results. They didn't say anything at all about how they created these curves. So, you are left in thinking how on earth did they make it? So, uh, let's implement these geometric equations into real antenna curves in CST. Okay, let's move on. The first thing to do before any work in CST is to check your units. Make sure they are in millimeter and gigahertz. This is CST Microwave 2016 version, so we might have different location of this unit menu in all the versions. And then turn on the local coordinate system, then go to curves and analytical curves. Next, define the equations vt equal s multiplied by exponential r multiplied by t. r is the rate of tapering, and the maximum limit is tl. Let's define the newly created parameters. These are all in millimeter, all right? TL 3 millimeter. Okay, so this is your first radiation curve for Vivaldi. So, what a beautiful curve. Alright, we have to make another similar curve like this one but in opposite side. So we have to repeat the same procedure. So let's go to curves and again analytical curve. And this is t, t. And this time, this should be minus because it's the opposite side of the previous curve. And this should be TL. Okay. This is the beautiful tapered structure of Vivaldi. But now we have to create a slot line connected to this tapered structure. And if you're not familiar with Vivaldi basics, please watch my other video on the basics of Vivaldi. You will have some idea. Now go to Polygon and then press Escape key. 
we will define the four endpoints of slot line separately in terms of parameters. Our first point is this, and this is our second point. We will define the parameters which are newly created. Actually, SL is basically this length. You can see this is the length of this parameter SL, the length of the slot. And now we will define the third point. Uh, this is minus S. Okay. And the last point is And this one is S. Oh, sorry, this should be actually minus. Minus of S. There you go. So now we completed our slot and the Vivaldi curves. This is slot curves. Okay, now uh, we have to join the two endpoints of the tapered structure with a straight line. So go to curves and then line and then you have to select the endpoint by using pick points function. So go to pick points and pick endpoint. The shortcut is P. You have to double click on this point and then join to this point. You have to use P to auto snap this point from the keyboard. Double click on it. There you go. We just joined and uh, the two endpoints and made a closed loop. To get a clear visual, let me turn off the working plane and PML boundary box so that we can see a clear view of this structure. There you go, working plane turn off. Now we will have to modify a lot now we will extrude this curve double click on it now notice the blue arrow line on the structure this is the direction of extrusion if you give a positive thickness the curve is extruded along the blue arrow but for the negative thickness it is extruded on the opposite side and if you do not understand the extrude function please watch my other csg tutorials from number one and you will know what it is since W axis is opposite to the direction of the blue arrow, so I will define a negative thickness minus 0 0.035 millimeter. This is the standard thickness of copper metal in PCB board. And let's define a name exponential. You can see preview. Okay, that looks good. Press OK to complete. Now it has become a three-dimensional geometry. Now we have to make a brick, a metal brick actually. So go to brick and create a brick. Just name it metal and define the coordinates like this minus SL minus EXT and this one is TL this one is minus sub W by 2 sub W by 2 and this one is the thickness of the copper press uh, oh, select the PEC as the material and define this newly created parameters this is millimeter all units are in millimeter. Press OK. All right, now there are two 3D objects. One is exponential, another is metal. The purpose of creating this metal is to create the slot of the Vivaldi. What we will do now is that we will strip off the exponential part from the metallic part and create the hollow slot of the Vivaldi. So for that, select metal and go to boolean and select subtract and select exponential. Press enter. There you go. 
a beautiful tapered hollow slot of Vivaldi. We are almost done. So that's how you create the slot of Vivaldi. Okay, now time to make the substrate for the Vivaldi antenna. Let's make the substrate. And give a name, substrate. And this one is minus SL minus EXT and U max is TL and V minimum is minus sub W by 2 that is the substrate width by 2 this one is positive and the thickness is minus H H is the thickness of the substrate and we will use a taconic material as a substrate so write down taconic and it's crawled down for RF 60A. It has an epsilon of 6.15 and lost tangent of 0.0028. Okay, just to click yes. And define the thickness for the substrate as 0.2 millimeter. Press OK. All right, we have now created the slot along with the substrate. One more thing is remaining. That is, we have to excite this antenna electrically by using a transmission line. And uh, we will use a microstrip to slot line transition for this purpose. So we need a microstrip line to energize this antenna. Now, we we'll do one thing, store the current origin of local code in the system so that you can go back to the origin again very easily. This is our saved origin. And now we will move the local coordinate system to one of the corners of the substrate. So just use pick and point, and click on it, and align WCS. So the local coordinate system has been moved to that point. So you have to click on it to see the local coordinate system. This is our current origin. Now we will move this local coordinate system origin a little bit to create the microst. We have to move along the U direction so EXT plus QWS quarter wave slot line QWS if you don't know about the microst to slot line transition you can study it from any microwave engineering textbook. Give a value of 0.75 millimeter and press OK. So the origin has been shifted to that point. Now we will make the microstrip. Let's name it microstrip. MW by 2, the width of the microstrip. This is a 50 ohm transmission line. The characteristic impedance is 50 and you have to take care about the width of the microstrip. There is some software to calculate the width given the characteristic impedance. And this is the thickness of the copper. The material must be PC. Okay, it looks fine. Now let's define the newly created parameters. Press OK. Now, so, congratulations! You just made your first Vivaldi. You just became an antenna engineer. You can change the parameter values later on. This is the beauty of parameterized geometry. For example, if you change the value of R, which is the rate of tapering, 
that means how fast the curve goes up, you can see a different structure. And if you change TL, the antenna length gets larger. So let's restore our design. In the next video, I'll show you how to simulate this very antenna and check the simulation results. That's how we engineers work, right? We make the system and simulate it and check its performance and if the simulation results are not satisfactory then we troubleshoot and pinpoint the problems and finally after getting good results we fabricate the system physically and measure the performance in lab thank you for watching see you guys next time